Hello, good day. Fantastic to see that so many people are here today at the venue who are interested in sustainability, um, innovation, social impact, and most of all, my personal favorite, clean tech, clean tech innovation. My name is Iman Martinson. I'm director of Latvia at Cleantech for Baltics and Cleantech for Baltics, it's a pan-Baltic initiative and we try to accelerate funding and policy support for Cleantech innovation. So even more, I'm uh, glad and thankful for the opportunity to be here today on this stage and tell you how and why uh, the Baltics can be the next Cleantech powerhouse. So, Today, we are at the Baltic Sustainability Awards, right? So the most commonly used term probably is sustainability. And for those of you who are wondering, okay, what actually clean tech is? Well, at its core, clean tech, uh, it's technologies that try to optimize the use of resources and at the same time, try to minimize the impact on environment and climate. So basically that's what we all hear in the media all day long that we are looking on one side for economic growth, right? And the other side, we're trying to minimize or human made impact on the environment and climate. So that's what we're talking all the day about. And therefore clean tech, it's going to be a huge thing. And it's already a huge thing, but it's going to gain more momentum uh, in the coming years because it's everywhere. It's in every aspect of our daily lives because clean tech, it's basically energy and power, how we create, create electro electricity, how we heat and cool things, how we grow food, how we make uh, things, how we manufacture things, uh, what kind of materials we use, what kind of resources we use. It's all clean tech innovation. And in the coming years, we're going to change, see significant changes, how those things uh, evolved and it's going to change our lives. So the opportunity in clean tech, it's huge. And I love how the International Energy Agency coined it, the age of clean technology manufacturing, because, uh, with clean tech, there's new markets being created, millions of jobs worldwide being created with clean tech, and supply chain and value chains are being disrupted. And that's the key essence to understand with clean tech that from one day to the next, things can significantly change because that innovation is a driving force where we are right now because we are in a race for net zero. And a vivid example, it's fantastic is automotive because 20 years ago, who could have imagined that the big guys, the big brands would struggle, right? Because nowadays we see that, um, there's new stakeholders, uh, driving the market, new startups, new technologies, services, products, the market has changed significant and it's clean tech innovation that's behind that. And of course we support it with our choices, consumers. As, as companies, as businesses, but underlying to that is clean tech innovation. And we will see it more and more because as I mentioned, the industries that clean tech covers, it's, it's huge. And therefore it's super important to understand and have the foresight as a region, as the Baltics, as Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, that we use what we have already done, double down on it and become a powerhouse for clean te technology. Because we are in the race for net zero and what that means, there's going to be countries, economies who are clean technology consumers and clean technology providers. And definitely we want to be the providers. And that brings us to startups, innovation, and uh, of course, underlying to that is investments and what clean tech for Baltics does as well is we try to track the private investments in clean technology startups and clean techs. And despite, and regardless the economic downturn that we have globally, the ecosystem for clean tech is going strong and growing. So we have a positive trend and we 
most probably with the newest data of uh, quarter four, we will going to have a growth in the clean tech sector in the Baltics. And to a large extent, it mimics the European trends that we have for clean tech. And that even more means that we have to find ways to strengthen and accelerate the clean tech sector. And that's also why we're here. We're celebrating those innovators who are putting sweat and tears in, in, in their companies to build those innovations, attract more financing and uh, help the ecosystem grow. And we're seeing a strong strand in pre-seed seed, and also in the growth sector. So we have a positive uh, trend in the ecosystem. And um, I wanted to share uh, a few thoughts on uh, one of the key sector of clean tech, which is energy and power. And because in the last years, we significantly saw that energy security and energy reliance, uh, resilience is, is key because really it, energy supply can disrupt all of our aspects of daily life and be strong and competitive globally, but also in the region. We have to firstly reduce um, energy usage, but that's energy efficiency basically. But we also have to more focus on electrifying and defossilizing which in short term means um, energy efficiency initiatives, but then again, also looking for simple and effective solutions and using um, more sustainable alternative fuels, for instance. In the long run, look for alternative fuels like hydrogen, how we can implement them and accelerate them. Secondly, we have to upgrade our energy supply. That definitely means how to scale uh, energy sources like uh, green hydrogen or also how to develop new, more sustainable fuels. We're looking here at uh, sustainable aviation fuel. So that's an emerging market, how we can really tap into that because it's developing right now. We can be at the forefront for a new market. So we have to really use our foresight and tap into that. And third is infrastructure. Infrastructure is key because without infrastructure, there's nothing. And in 2025, we're going to synchronize with the European grid here in the Baltics, which basically means there's a new market emerging, uh, which is huge. There's going to be needs for new technology, products, services here in the Baltics. And those stakeholders who have the foresight right now and prepare for the switch they're going to be in a leading position to be competitive in 2025. And of course, there's strength that also allows the Baltics to shine and perform. And of course, we have political support. Yes, we have private investments. Yes, there's uh, attraction among private investors for CleanCheck. And that's something also we try to do at CleanCheck for Baltics, that we mobilize those private uh, investors to be more focused on the immense opportunity that clean tech has. And um, definitely there's also an entrepreneurial spirit in the Baltics that is that has no comparison globally. People are hungry, they want to do, they want to innovate, and they want to uh, do things. And that's also a key strength of the Baltics that we can put use to perform uh, strong in the future. And of course, there's also public funding available in the Baltics that helps the risk those uh, private investments and uh, accelerate the rollout of clean technologies. But where there's strengths, there's also challenges. And there are a few, and we definitely need more sandboxes and testing facilities in the Baltics that will, uh, would allow or innovators to hear uh, that are here today as well, to test, validate, pilot their technologies, uh, preferably with the industry, that they have the validation here at home, that they can go global and be technology providers on the global uh, arena. That's super important that we really strengthen this aspect. Then, of course, public funding. As I mentioned, there is public funding available, but it could be better structured. There could be also more non-grant, non-equity incentives available, which would mean 
guarantees, especially if we're talking hydrogen, or low interest loans for clean technology innovators. And of course, the green transition. We all heard about it and we definitely need a vision. We need a vision also on the Baltic level. Where are we going? What's the roadmap to the risk capital investments in the Baltic region so we have an accelerated growth in the section? Because that would also allow us to better structure technologies that we implement to uh, decarbonize, but also better to innovate to be technology providers, as I mentioned before. And of course, we need more collaboration internationally and in the Baltics. We need to brand ourselves as the powerhouse here in the Baltics with innovation potential in clean. Thank you all. And let's make clean tech uh, uh, a number one priority in the Baltics. Thank you all.